or a little later. Uh, but certainly we are headed towards a singularity of change. There's no doubt about that. Even the scientists, as, spec as, as skeptical as they are, they see it coming. Even the governments see it coming. And that's why you see such an increase in surveillance and security like that. They're, they're ramping up. They're getting ready for it. So they don't know what's going to happen either, but they know it's going to be wild. Uh, but of course, all of these preventative measures will fail. There's really nothing we can do. Uh, because whatever is going to happen is completely unimaginable. How do you prepare for the unimaginable? You dig a big hole? <laughs> Jump into it? I don't know. Nobody really knows. So, are there any questions at this point? Are we, uh, Baba? Yeah. Uh, has this phenomena occurred countless times in countless universes over countless eons? Absolutely. His question for those of you on the web is: Has this happened before? And yes, it's happened many, many, many times before. That's why we don't have reliable his histories going back more than, let's say, about five thousand years. The last time this happened was at the end of the Dwarpa Yuga, when the Battle of Kurukshetra occurred. And so most of the worlds just went into a complete chaos, and they lost their sense of history. Only the Vedic tradition really has reliable history that's over more than 5,000 years old. And that's because they took extraordinary measures to preserve it. Others weren't ready for this. They didn't see it coming. Had no idea, so they couldn't prepare. You think many people will die? I don't know. That's the whole point. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and if we think we do, we're just fooling ourselves. It's going to be a, a, an adventure, though. And probably negative rather than positive. Who knows? I think the aftermath, once once things settle down is going to be pretty good because we go, according to the Mayans, we go from the world of chaos to the world of peace. And according to the Vedic calendar, we go from the Kali Chakra to the Satya Chakra. And Satya is always a time of peace and spirituality and, you know, wonderful things. But it's the transition that's the, the problem. The transition is going to be rough uh, because in Kali Yuga we have so many social, economic, political, religious structures that are based on the principle of exploitation. And we're going to get to a point where that's going to like short circuit itself. And the whole thing's going to come crashing down like a house of cards. It's simply not going to work anymore. People are just going to get tired of the exploitation and finally say, okay, I'm done with this, this is over. It's like, I'm past this, let's move on. And at that point, there's going to be like, what, what's, it, it might be something like the war that's going on between the record companies and their, and their customers. People want downloadable songs, and the record companies want to sell CDs. So they're, they're at war with each other. The record company says, you're going to buy these CDs, God damn it, you're going to like it. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to sue you. The consumers are saying, ah, forget that, man. You know, <laughs> if I can download something on the web in two minutes, why should I spend $15 on a CD? Uh, and, they're, and they're right. Uh, I think we're going to see these kind of conflicts come up in many, many areas of society. Uh, people are fed up with exploitive government, exploitive religion, what you speak of exploitive business, you know. They're simply not going to take it anymore. And I think we're going to see a lot of people dropping out of the system. Uh, I mean, there's a prediction in, in the Vedas that at this time uh, a lot of people will go to the government land and just live in the forest and stuff like that. And I, I see that coming. I mean, ever gone to a rainbow gathering? They get bigger every year. People just go to an area in the, in the national forest and they camp out and, um, you know, it's like a big party. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, this could just be like, um, this is just a guesstimate on my, my side, but the um, thinking of it, whether it's going to be negative or positive is really more in, in your own projection.
attraction than what it is. Kind of like if you build, if you build your entire foundation or your entire life upon like shaky foundation, something that's a little too material, and depending upon the material world, then it's really just a way of kind of like the destruction of it is more or less just like a wake up call, saying like you know bring bring yourself back down to like a, an actual foundation rather than what you built upon the material world. Yeah, that's exactly right. Ben is saying, for those of you on the web, that uh, the, the foundation or the categories that people have built up to describe their existence are basically going to fail. It's going to be a huge wake-up call, and they'll have to come back down to earth and find a new way of looking at things. And that's the whole point, exactly. That's what I mean that our, 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 our semantic systems are going to fail. Those are the categories that we use to describe our experience to ourselves. Right. Our ontology in the work. Our ontology is inadequate for the experience that we have, even now. Uh, because it doesn't take into account the phenomenon of consciousness, right. which is what we are talking about basically in the last session. We were trying to, to give a, a theory of consciousness that really works, you know, that really describes the, the symptoms and the actions of consciousness. So what we're doing now is we're trying to define um, you know, what, what's going to happen when all those categories, when all those stories that we use to describe our experience to ourselves suddenly fail and none of them are adequate anymore. That's coming closer and closer. Right. The faster the change accelerates. And then just pretty much the chaos that would be there are the people trying to hold on to what used to be there. Well, it's only chaos because we try to hold on. To right. It. You know, uh, like what, what happens when you trip, for example, is that the rate of change increases beyond your ability to hold on to anything. And the more you try, <laughs> the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Until finally you just surrender and let go and go with the flow. And then everything's all right. So this is going to be like the whole world, you know, trip out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> really hard. <laughs> you know, I mean, maybe somebody invents a, a nanotechnology that, that just like permeates everything. Mm -hmm. You know, everything starts waving, moving or something. I mean, who knows? It's going to be something really crazy, whatever it is. Virtual reality, you know, that... Uh, Lunch is ready. Lunch is ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Well... I guess we shouldn't ignore that. <laughs> what time is it? Uh, almost two o'clock. Great. Great. Okay. Florian says he see, sees a UFO that looks like a bird. Anyway. Uh, maybe, maybe the changes we got. <laughs> right. <laughs> I saw a UFO that looked like Florian the other day. What's that? I saw a UFO that looked like Florian. <laughs> Randy says he saw a UFO that looks like Florian. <laughs> Have I seen UFOs? Oh, what do you mean by a UFO? <laughs> I've seen Krishna. Uh, he's pretty unidentifiable if you didn't know. <laughs> Teleporting birds, oh great. Well, whatever they are, it's something that we don't understand. Yeah, X-Files. So it's like when people come in contact with something that they don't understand and don't have the language or the categories to describe to themselves, then they go into denial and they make something up. Huh? So we all have stories about little green men and flying saucers. So when we come in touch with something that we don't understand, we tend to project our story on the reality. Uh, because we go into denial on what really happened. We can't deal with it. We don't want to deal with it. Instead, we, we project like a movie projector, our own vision or our own interpretation on whatever it is we're experiencing. Uh, that's what happens whenever we come in contact with something radically new. Okay, well, whatever they are, <laughs> now we're getting into a whole thing on UFO, a whole riff on UFOs. Um, 
Imagine if reality itself changed in a completely unexpected way. People would start to impose or project their own expectations on that new reality because of, they don't have categories to describe it to themselves and they would go into denial on what that reality actually is and start imagining what they think it is. So in other words, if, if there was a, a significant change in the reality itself, the whole uh, population could basically go into a mass psychosis. I think this is what's going to happen. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty gnarly. It's probably not going to be pretty. Um, but that's what people do when they're confronted with something that they can't understand. Whether it's a UFO or some kind of dimensional shift or teleporting birds or demigods or whatever.